Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I'm Ayo DG, Makindi. We'll begin with security matters where agencies in the Federal Capital Territory have warned criminal elements with the intent to disturb the peace of the territory this Easter and beyond to change their thoughts or be ready to face the repercussions. These warnings are contained in operational orders on security preparations for the festivities. Correspondent Onotu Yakubu reports. During festivities such as the Easter celebration that is to be observed in matter of days, places of worship such as this church behind me, recreational facilities and parks and gardens are usually of sentimental interest to operatives and management of security agencies. The reason behind this is not far-fetched. The target is to ensure that patronage of such facilities do not come under any threat from men of the underworld with sinister motives to disrupt plans and activities of law-abiding citizens in the territory. However, beyond all of these operational strategic initiatives, residents' expectations transcend just heightened tempo of presence for the Easter festivities. Communities should be protected and then everywhere should be secured because criminal nowadays, they roam about to see that they do one or two things. Already our EODs have gone round to sweep all these uh, uh, recreation centers and all these uh, places of uh, worship and all that. So everything is set. Our men are everywhere. We do our routine patrol day and night and you know, we pin down in relevant black spots and we're doing what we should do. The security agencies emphasized that the subsisting ban on certain activities that are inimical to general security will be fully enforced. Onotu Yakubo, NTA News. The Nigerian army has declared eight persons wanted in connection with the recent killing of 17 soldiers in Okwama community in Delta State. The persons declared wanted by the Nigerian Army on its official X account on Thursday include seven male and a female. The Director, Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, urges the public to provide useful information to help apprehend the suspects. In another development, the Commandant General of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Ahmed Abubakar Audi, has ordered the deployment of 35,000 personnel across the Federation. NSCDC spokesperson Afolabi Babawali says the deployment is part of measures to ensure a hitch free Easter celebration. The NSCDC also urges the public to support the personnel by giving timely information on suspected criminal actions for prompt responses. In the march towards the attainment of a competitive, timely and cost-efficient trade in goods and services within and across Nigeria's borders, the federal government has relaunched the National Trade Facilitation Committee with commitments to deliver unworkable frameworks that will improve transport, infrastructure, customs, customs procedures, ports efficiency and usage of its solutions. With the commitment of the present administration of President Bolabe to improve our economic recovery, the merits will be surely change in the future. I look up to you for the economic development that this country severely needs. Our collaboration today, if built on very strong will, 
will help us to explore the full potentials of trade facilitation, which includes but is not limited to increased trade volumes, reduction of transaction costs, and improved compliance with regulations. Let us embrace this relaunch as more than a ceremonial act. Let it be the reaffirmation of our collective will to forge a path of progress and prosperity. Of industry, trade and investment, Doris Anite also added to the membership of the Trade Facilitation and Liberalization Committee with the view to reinvigorating the actualization of said goals. The Nigeria National Petroleum Company NNPC mega station was gutted by fire Wednesday night. Although no death or casualty were recorded, it is believed that the incident occurred when a petroleum tanker was discharging its contents. Simon Asha has a situation report from the busy Galadima Aminu Way Yola, where the mega station is located. <laughs> The inferno which caused a section of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation NMPC mega station Yola destroyed a petroleum tank loaded with premium motor spirit pumping machines among other availables at the station. According to eyewitness account, the incident which occurred around 9 o'clock in the evening Wednesday night when a tank containing the petroleum product was discharging its contents at the mega station. <laughs> I cannot really say the cause of the fire outbreak, but uh, the situation was brought under control. It took the effort of firefighters, among other organizations, to put off the fire and prevent escalation. There is no life that is lost, but properties worth millions uh, got destroyed. But that notwithstanding, I'm not preempting investigation, but investigation will definitely going to reveal the source, the genesis, the bottom part of the infer. As at the time of filing this report, business activity at the mega station has been put to stop, with heavy security personnel seen at the premises. In Yola, Simon Asher, NT News. Time now to go over to Yola and join um, Simon Asher. Simon, um, it's um, good to see you, but uh, surely not good news coming out from that particular area. Um, how are residents picking up from the pieces? Uh, well, uh, even though the business activity as reported in the failing station has been halted, the NMPC mega station, which is situated along Galadima Aminu Road, which has the Central Bank of Nigeria, among other commercial banks and businesses, is one of the key areas that uh, people of the state come for their business for their businesses and just yesterday night the mega station was gutted by fire even though the situation that led to the outbreak of the fire is not that ascertained but it is believed that this particular petroleum tank that was filled with the petroleum product was dispersing the the, the product in the under tank in, in the filling station but along the line it 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 fire it got gutted by, by by fire and and thank god there there are no casualties apart from this particular tank and two pumping machines that were destroyed no life was lost and thanks to the security agencies the firefighters that came together to contain and um, bring that the the, the 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 fire as i'm talking to you now the, the, the NMPC mega station here used to be the last resort for most of the activities here in the state because they normally come here to access petroleum product. But now, nobody, no motorists, nobody is here. The activity has been halted and investigation is still ongoing as to what has transpired that led to the outbreak or to the inferno at the NMPC mega station here in Yola, the Adama State Capital. Uh, obviously, uh, we don't expect to have um, many people around there. It's supposed to be um, a cordoned off area at the moment. But uh, what reaction are we having from the state's government? And are there instant efforts to ensure that the area comes back to live? Yeah, yeah. When we, this morning, we were, with, we were at the office of the police public relations officer in the state, where he told us that Governor Ahmad Marifin III is expected to come and see for himself what has happened 
and the level at which the fire has damaged the filling station. But as I'm talking to you up to now, he has not arrived. Even on arriving here, the police officers there, are mounting guard here, they were even asking that they are still waiting for the governor to come. We can't really tell when the governor will be coming, but I can assure you that any moment from now, the governor will come for assessment as a come and see for himself the level at which the filling station has been damaged. That for sure, I know the governor will come and do that. I would like to thank you for giving us an update on that unfortunate incident. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I've been conversing with Simon Asher right there in Yola where an NMPC mega station was gutted. That was just in the early hours of today. Now, let's move on and tell you that ahead of the 2024 farming season, Governor Diko Omar Rada of Katsina State has flagged off the annual aerial spraying exercise against Kela bird and other pests in the state. Awal Haliru reports that the exercise is among the routine programs by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security to ensure safe farming activities. The report. Kuele baits are among other pests that are affecting crops, causing damages and losses to farmers in Katsana State. The annual aerial supreme exercise is part of the support that farmers in the state are receiving from the federal government to boost their farming activities. Governor Dukoratna appreciated the federal government for providing chemicals and the jet to be used for the supreme exercise and hoped the program would be sustained in the state. We are so grateful to the federal government, especially the government of renewed hope of uh, President Tinubu. And uh, we hope and pray that the collaboration between the state and the federal government will continue in all aspects. And everything is here, so it's for them just to take up and go to the uh, roasting and nettling site that we have already identified during our surveillance for them to, 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 to make sure that uh, you know, they reach the target of those beds. The spraying exercise covers dams in Jibia, Duzima, and the other local government areas of the state. In Katsana, Awan Halleru, NT News. In a related development, the federal government is unveiled reforms in the livestock subsector of the economy that would bring to an end the incessant farmer header crisis. Correspondent Mosa Baba Aliu reports. Home of peace and tourism is the slogan of Plateau State. But agronomists name the state as the home of Irish potatoes and vegetables. However, the incessant communal clashes in the state has been affecting food production output of the state. <laughs> Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Awaka Chari, says the government is making efforts to ensure peace in rural and farming communities in the country. Our land mass is shrinking and we have to collaborate assiduously with the subnationals, with the state governments and state governments, so as to bring us out of this challenge that we face as a country in terms of food insecurity. With peace returning to Plateau, the state governor says his administration is revolutionizing agricultural activities in the state. It is scandalous that the major hotels in Nigeria still import Irish potatoes from South Africa. This is a fact, and it shouldn't be. And I think we can change the narrative. The state governor also confirms receiving foodstuffs allocation from the federal government to cushion the effects of food inflation in the state. We want to specially thank Mr. President, who has intervened massively. And I can announce to you that we are presently receiving some supplies uh, of palliatives, maize, sorghum, and hopefully rice would follow, which we, we hope should be able to address some of the immediate needs in terms of hunger. The Minister of Agriculture and Food Security is gradually releasing food from strategic reserves to state governors as directed by the President. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Federal government's program on the development and implementation of low carbon and climate resilient strategies in critical sectors such as forestry, agriculture and energy will soon commence in Oshun State. To this end, the Board of National Council on Climate and some foreign partners met with Governor Adimola Adiliki at the government's house in Oshogu. Femi Afariogun reports.
The National Council on Climate Change selected Osho State as a pilot site for the multimillionaire biodiversity and carbon investment project to be sited at Agowu Forest in Ayeda De local government area of the state. This visit by the council and French investors to Governor Adimola Adeliki is to highlight that the project will provide technical and financial assistance to the state to develop and implement low carbon and climate resilient strategies in key sectors such as forestry, agriculture and energy. For Ocean State, uh, this project is a win-win project. The, first of all, the project will empower the forest dependent communities. The project will also contribute to social economic development. Much more importantly, this project focuses on carbon um, offsetting, all right, and um, carbon credit. So when we are in, if for those countries or those organizations that are in carbon deficit, they can buy carbon credit from Washington State. I have directed action on due diligence to ensure that the interests of all parties are duly protected. My team will enter into full technical discussion with you to ensure successful takeoff. The project is a tripartite collaboration between the Presidency, the National Council on Climate Change, and an energy company in France. In Oshogbo Femi, Afari Ogun, NTA News. Lagos is next on Nationwide, and Hingino will be our guide. It's over to you, Hingino. Ayodeji. Those at various leadership positions in the country have been advised to lead by example and serve the people in the interest of humanity as exemplified by Jesus Christ. The Catholic Archbishop of the Metropolitan See of Lagos, Most Reverend Alfred Adewale Martins, said heavenly virtues like sacrifice and love are essence of Maundy Thursday. Amaka Owo reports. The Chrism Mass is usually celebrated on Monday, Thursday. The word Chrism means anointed in Greek. The celebration, which commemorates the gift of the sacred priesthood, dates back to 200 AD. Chrism affords the church an opportunity to introspect and self-examine, refreshing the understanding of its nature, action, and challenges. It certainly provides opportunity for priests, religious and lay faithful to reflect on the significance of the sacred priesthood. And all of us praising and asking God for, for help and guidance. And then of course for the lay faithful, we will only continue to ask them to pray for their priests. To pray for their priests because they are subject to the same situation that all of us are, that all human beings are. And if there, are, if there is need for correction, they should be corrected in love. The 74-year-old Catholic Archdiocese of Lagos has about 536 priests. This celebration, therefore, avails them the opportunity to renew their vows and commitment made on the day of their ordination. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, we always feel grateful for the gift of the priesthood, uh, thanking God for counting us worthy and worthy though we are, to be his representative on earth, to be, his, uh, uh, to be the co-mediators like his son Jesus Christ between him and humanity. An important aspect of the crazy mass is the blessing of the oil of the sick, the oil of the catechumens and consecration of the crazy yard. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. Flooding wreaks havoc in Lagos yearly. To forestall disasters and the harrowing experiences many go through, particularly during the rainy season, the state's Ministry of Environment has set in motion its Flood Prevention and Management Plan for the year 2024. It is also collaborating with NIMET and the Ogun Oshun River Basin Authority for valuable forecasts and early warning mechanism. Environment correspondent Jennifer Igwe has more on this. Armed with data and forecasts that Lagos is expected 
to experience more than normal amount of rainfall in year 2024 with a predicted total of 1,936.2 millimeters, the state government has activated its flood prevention and management plan. Checking the flood any warning system to deliver reliable, timely and effective flood information at appropriate response time. Our village engineers are available in all our 57 other governments and LCDs to attend to all village related matters during and after the rainy season. For those in low-lying areas and communities that are extremely close neighbors to the Ogun River, the likelihood of flooding that yearly inundates the axis is inevitable. The state government is advising residents to make early plans on where to relocate temporarily during the peak of the rainy season when a combination of flash flood and water released from the Oyo Dam overwhelms the Ogu River, causing it to overflow and flood the area wreaking havoc. We are also determined to maintain a long established synergy and partnership with the Osho River Basin Authority, which has ensured control and monitoring of the steady and systemic release of water from Oyo Dam to prevent flooding and of the downstream reaches of the Ogu River. We will also continue to protect our water bodies from indiscriminate discharge of solid waste as well as erection of illegal structures along the drainage alignment setback. Environmentalists have suggested the construction of a flood wall to check the adverse effect of flooding from the Ogun River. The state government says such intervention is beyond its capacity, but there are plans with the federal government for sustainable solution to the perennial flooding aggravated by release of water from the dam. In Lagos, Jennifer Igwe, NTA News. Those are the reports from Lagos Nationwide continues in Sokoto after this break. Do stay. <laughs> Good evening everyone, welcome to Sokoto. Sokoto State Government has pledged continued collaborations with development partners to improve the well-being of people in the state. State Deputy Governor Idris Mohamed Gobir stated this at an event marking the end of USAID Breakthrough Action Nigeria project in Sokoto State, jointly organized between Sokoto State Government and the Donor Agency. Bashir Ibrahim Nababa has more. The USAID Nigeria has influenced behavioral change approaches in the areas of maternal newborn, child health and nutrition through the Breakthrough Action Nigeria in Sokoto State, with the theme celebrating success, consolidating learning and transitioning for sustainability. This event is to officially round off activities of the donor partners in the state after spending six years. Governor of Sokoto State represented, acknowledges the project's contributions in improving health care services and well-being of people with assurance that the state government will build and sustain the program. The program, you know, stand palm so that at least everyone look at the program more there. Yeah. What you are leaving behind, the legacy leaving behind, you know, this is a mature legacy and I believe it has the ability of being sustained and the state government may have a little to put in so that we can sustain the program. The Sultanate Council represented applauded Sokoto State Government and the international partners for impacting positively on the lives of the people. The event features presentation of projects document to Sokoto State Government. From Sokoto, Bashir Ibrahim Nababa, NTA News. Wife of Zamfara State's governor, Huria Dauda Lawal, has flagged off distribution of food and clothing materials to 20,000 vulnerable households in the state. This gesture is to enable the beneficiaries observe the ongoing Ramadan fast with ease. Halil Muhammad has more. The donation of Ramadan welfare packages to 20,000 vulnerable households in Zamfara State by wife of the state governor, Huria Dauda Lawal, is to provide some sense of relief to the beneficiaries in view of the current economic hardship. The items donated include rice, millet, guinea corn, maize, sugar, spaghetti, beans, groundnut oil, and wrappers. Wife of the state governor who flagged off distribution of the items in Anka, Bukuyum, and Gumi local government areas said adequate arrangements have been made to ensure the gesture 
reaches the target beneficiaries across the 14 local government areas of the state. She added that plans by the state government to distribute similar packages to other categories of the needy are underway to support people of the state in observing Ramadan fast and forthcoming festivity with relative ease. The beneficiaries who are full of excitement over the gesture thanked the governor's wife and prayed for the success of the present administration. The distribution of the food items and clothing materials continues in other local government areas of the state. In Gusau, Haller Muhammad, NTA News. Well, that's about the size of our per contribution. Nationwide will continue with IODG in Abuja. Nana Aisha in our Sokoto Network Center would like to thank you. Back here in Abuja, in recognition of a commitment towards fighting the scourge of tuberculosis, Nigeria's first lady, Oluremi Tinubu, has been decorated as global and national stop TB champion. She was decorated by Global Stop TB Partnership at an investiture ceremony held at the banquet hall of the presidential villa. The first lady's face and voice has been enlisted in the fight against tuberculosis and she is expected to join other top TV champions to expand public interest in tuberculosis towards meeting the end TB target for Nigeria before 2030. Accepted the responsibility that comes with a new office, the first lady says the dream of ending TB is achievable with the support of all critical stakeholders. At all levels, legislators, private sector partners, development partners, civil society organizations, healthcare professionals, academia, market men and women, communities, religious leaders, traditional rulers, and individuals to intensify their efforts to working together to end tuberculosis by ensuring that everyone has access to quality TB diagnosis and treatment services. In what was her first official duty as a newly decorated global and national stop TB champion, the first lady decorated wives of state's governors as state champions for stop TB campaign in their states. The ceremony was witnessed by the coordinating minister for health and social welfare, Muhammad Ali Pati, and representatives of development partners who expressed confidence in a commitment to end the scourge in Nigeria. Former President Muhammad Buhari extends birthday greetings to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, wishing him good health and long life in order for the country to benefit from his excellent leadership on his 72nd birthday. Former President Muhammad Buhari commended Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu for making sustained efforts to overcome the many problems of the country while wishing him many happy returns. My family and I pray to God that you remain healthy and happy and continue to work for the betterment of the country. Happy birthday to you and end of quotes. Following the outbreak of Lassa fever in Eja community in Obubra local government area, several measures have been put in place by the Cross River State government to prevent and prepare for immediate control of any disease. Correspondent Udrak Etam reports that residents of the community are still appealing for more interventions by the state's Ministry of Health to ensure the people of the area are protected and safe. The report. Eja is a hard-to-reach rural community in Obubra local government area of Cross River State. This rural community lacks functional health facility, portable water and other basic amenities that can make life more comfortable. Recently, Eja community has experienced outbreak of Lassa fever and investigation reveals that one person died of the virus. Because we know what Lassa fever is. They are supposed to quarantine these people there. The state government to, to come to look at this situation and equip this uh, clinic. I am in short crying for the government to look into all these things so that uh, this uh, area will be somehow secured. The situation is very key. 
because if you don't fumigate the environment, definitely that virus is still within the environment and people will still contract it. The state rapid response team swing into action. They were deployed to go to Asia. They went there, they did investigation, they line listed contact to the disease. Residents are advised to take precautionary measures such as regular hand washing as Lassa fever is transmitted to humans through direct contact with infected rodents or through food and household items contaminated with urine or feces of infected rats. In Calabar, Uduak Etam, NTA News. Now let's join Uduak Etam in Calabar to give us... Uh... Bring us up to speed to what is really happening. Now that we're having a recent outbreak of Lassa fever, surely there will be fears. But how are people getting ready to prevent another major event? Thank you, studio. Recently, Cross River State had recorded a case of Lassa fever in Aja community in Obubra local government area. This was made known to us by the state epidemiologist and member representing Obubra 1 state constituency in the Cross River State House of Assembly, Obatagbo, during plenary, when he raised a motion calling on the state government to, as a matter of urgency, take proactive steps to curb the spread of the virus in that community. Other members of the House also contributed, and a resolution reached that... Uh, Potable water be provided in that community because the community lacks potable water. There is no good drinking water in that community. People fetch water from the stream and the river as well. And some people also defecate around the river bank and the water is not good enough for drinking. This may also cause water related disease such as cholera. And the state government got into action visited the community through the state epidemiologist and um, contact tracing was done people who had direct contact with the deceased because one person died of the virus example of those people who had direct contact with the deceased were taken to the lab and results came out all of them proved a negative and apart from that the uh, community are also appealing that the state government should also come and fumigate the entire community. Because apart from the contact tracing which the state government has done, there is no other thing done by the state government according to the residents of the community. And they are now appealing that fumigation should be done in the community to cope, the, to cope further spread of this virus. And apart from that, enlightenment is very necessary. The people need to be properly enlightened on Lassa fever because so many people in the community do not understand what Lassa fever is, the causes and also the preventive measures. Well, Udrak, I would like to thank you for giving us um, a very good summary of what has happened so far in Obubra and of course efforts being taken to ensure that um, the outbreak is limited and of course... Um, the damage already done also is limited. Thanks for your time once again, Udwak. Thank you, studio, and back to you for the continuation of the nationwide news. Udwak Atem there giving us an update on the outbreak of Lassa fever in Eja community in Obubra local government area of Cross River State. The Federal Character Commission says strict adherence to staff recruitment guidelines into federal tertiary institutions is mandatory. The Commission says it has observed that some federal tertiary institutions now embark on staff recruitment without recourse to Federal Character Commission, settled with the responsibility of ensuring equity, fairness and justice in consonance with Section 14B of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It emphasizes that all guidelines must come to play in recruiting into federal tertiary institutions drawing the attention of the National Universities Commission, National Commission for Colleges of Education, National Board for Technical Education, all heads of federal institutions and other relevant authorities to take note of this notice. We cross over now to our Ibadan Network Center, where Kemi 
is already standing by. Over to you, Kemi. Thank you, Ayodeji, and a warm welcome to Ibadan. The secret of successful family life was the thrust of this year's Ramadan lecture organized by the Muslim Association of Nigeria in Ibadan. Jam Registrar Professor Ishak Oloyede, who was the guest lecturer, emphasized the role of men and women towards a healthy family life. Ayomiku Ajibala reports that the Minister of Justice, Latif Fagbemi, SAN, was among other dignitaries present at the lecture. The Ramadan lecture with the topic, The Man and Woman, Exploration of the Responsibilities of Muslim Men to Womanhood, the 20th edition put together by the Muslim Society of Nigeria. Guest lecturer, Professor Ishak Oloyidi said a Muslim man must treat his wife as an equal individual with respect, kindness, and fairness. A man's most valuable deed, according to him, is to treat his wife in a way that transforms her into a virtuous personality can be achieved when a man understands his wife's behavior and desires and organizes his life according to a righteous request. Provide accommodation for them as the same style as your own. This lecture is meant to serve the purpose of soul winning and informing the public about the current issues of importance in society, both of which are part of the core objectives of man. Awards were presented to some distinguished personalities in recognition of assistance their families have provided to the association in the propagation of Islam in Ibadan. Members, members of the society have been encouraged to give back to humanity by assisting the vulnerable and less privileged. This was at an outreach by wife of your state governor, Tamuno Minini Makide, to children with special needs and the vulnerable in your state in commemoration of the Easter. Grace Anyoliki has the report. To improve the quality of life of vulnerable children, the disabled and others who are less privileged within Oyo State, wife of Oyo State Governor Tamuno Minini Makinde stretched out an arm of love to various homes for orphans and kids with special needs across the state. Representing the wife of the governor, Chairperson Oyo State House of Assembly Committee on Women Affairs said the gesture is important to foster a sense of community and compassion for those who receive the help. Giving them hope to smile, hope for their future. She is really touching lives and we are really proud of her excellency. In the same vein, Customs Officers Wise Association or your Ocean Command has also extended a hand of charity to school for handicapped children and home for abandoned and rescued children as well as juvenile correctional institution in Ibado. The growing children from time to time they need their own help. So I will even pass this message across to our national president. They encourage the homes to judiciously use the items provided in Ibado. Grace Ayonliki, NTA News. You're still watching you're still watching Nationwide on the NTA. More reports with Ayo Deji in Abuja after this break. Do stay with us. You're welcome back. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, has again re-emphasized the commitment by President Bola Tinubu's administration to cushion the effects of fuel subsidy removal as the federal government continues to roll out palliative programs and activities in every sector of the economy. The SGF was speaking when receiving a delegation of the Yoruba community in the 19 northern states of the country, explaining efforts by the federal government towards poverty alleviation in the country. The SGF says President Tinubu means well for the country. He urges Nigerians to be patient and support his administration as the sacrifices by Nigerians at this period of time is temporary 
and will yield the desired economic improvements. The SGF also acknowledges the contributions of the Yoruba community in the northern states in uniting and strengthening the harmonious relationship among tribes in the country. Motivation and recognition of unflinching efforts is key to the success story of any organization to drive delivery of quality performance and customer satisfaction necessary to boosting the morale of employees. This played out at the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations National Spokesperson 2024 Awards Ceremony, where 20 individuals and organizations were honored for outstanding performances. Haman Jabani reports. National Spokespersons Award, a platform to celebrate and acknowledge outstanding spokespersons in corporate communications, public affairs, politics, media, advocacy, and other domains in Nigeria. It's important for us to recognize those that we will begin to look at as icons, as templates, as those who we show the way, mentor the other people that are coming behind. It was a night of glitz and glamour with 200 entries but 10% scaled through to be honored at the fourth edition of the annual Thank event. You. I feel very great on behalf of the Chief Corporate Communications Officer because it's been a very assiduous task to change the perception of NNPC to our nation, to our people. We've taken the brand to a higher level. I'm always a step ahead of uh, whatever the situation is and that is also what is complementing the efforts of the uh, robust synergy you know in the national assembly i attribute this to the leadership and guidance of my boss the chief of defense staff general cg musa who is very very passionate about moving the armed forces you know forward we're going to work harder to make sure that um, uh, the business of public relations we are practicing in Nigeria customs is ethical and is to a standard that um, people will learn from us. Categories include distinguished spokespersons in technology, crisis management, political communication, judiciary, among others. The presence of a 105-year-old pioneer member of the institute added color and dignity to the event. The award is expected to promote efficiency and spur spokespersons to remain committed to advancing the cause of public relations in the country. Hamad Jabani, NTA News. Now let's also tell you that federal government will not relent to provide learners with conducive environments for effective critical thinking, oral and written communications in its continuous quest to boost confidence of young boys and girls to develop a literate society. This was at the grand finale of the National Senior Secondary Schools debate organized by the Ministry of Education. The debate features students of schools from each of the six geopolitical zones in the country to further foster sense of unity among students by encouraging open, respectful and constructive debates on topics of national interest and importance. It is our collective responsibility to ensure that the education system continues to foster critical thinking, creativity, and a sense of civic duty. I urge all the participants to continue honing their debating skills and never stop seeking knowledge and understanding. It is my wish that we be become men and women of influence in the nearest future because this will actually shape your future. Federal Government Girls College, Benin City, emerged as the overall winner and was presented with cash award of 150,000 Naira. The 18 registered political parties under the umbrella of Inter-Party Advisory Council of Nigeria, IPAC, now have an action plan to cover their goals and aspirations in the country. Timothy Yusuf reports that the unveiled plan contains actions to be taken to ensure further growth of the nation's democratization process. The report. Unveiling of the Inter-Party Advisory Council's four-year action plan supported by the Westminster Foundation for Democracy, 
under the Nigeria Open Political Party project. Chairman of IPAC, Yusuf Maman Dantale, said the plan will have a spiral effect in the nation's democratic space. With the lessons of the 2020 general election, supplementary polls, off circle, governorship elections, and by elections, Nigeria demand and deserve free, fair, credible, transparent, inclusive, and peaceful elections in Edo and Ondo State Gubernatorial elections. Representative of the INEC chairman, National Commissioner Professor Sam Ulumekun, former president of the Senate and secretary to the government of the Federation, Ayim Pius Ayim, and House of Representatives Majority Leader Professor Julius Yombere, were unanimous in their position that IPAC must rise to the challenge and address salient issues in the political party system. Much of the challenges we face during the election is rooted from the mistakes or the mischief that was done in the party primaries or uh, within the party uh, machinery. The task of deepening, consolidating and growing our democracy is the collective responsibility of all Nigerians. The Commission welcomes robust proposals on matters related to continuous improvement in the processes and procedures of election management and administration in Nigeria. The country director of Westminster Foundation for Democracy, Adebowale Olorumola, believed that Nigeria cannot address money politics without the support of the political parties, promising continued support to political parties in the country to implement the plan. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. And next is sports updates. In an effort to celebrate International Women's Day and promote gender balancing, the Nigerian Olympic Committee Women's Commission organized the road walk in Abuja with a team Inspire Inclusion. The president of the Nigeria Olympic Committee, Habu Ahmed Gumel, flagged up the walk and emphasized the importance of women's inclusion, citing the success of Team Nigeria, especially the women, at the recent African Games in Ghana. We are now in the IOC about 60, 40, it will even be about 50, 50 at one time. Likewise, in the Nigerian Olympic Committee, we are doing our best to make sure that we have a lot of women in our ESCO, in our board, and everywhere you think of. And that is the reason why this one is to bring awareness, not only to the people that are here, but to, to the whole nation, to know that women are important and they should be involved in the sporting activities. Look at this just concluded um, African Championship. Um, in Ghana, we see that the the award that they're giving to and recognition they're actually giving to women in in sports participation, um, technical coaching, and all that is inspiring lots of women. In other news, the week 11 results of the Nigeria Women's Football League saw several exciting matches played across eight centers. Royal Queens and Confluence Queens played a goalish draw, while Adamawa Queens defeated Niger Rattles 2-0. Heartland Queens, Nasarawa Amazon, Bayelso Queens, FC Robo, and Edo Queens all secured home wins. In tennis, Ekaterina Alexandrova continued her impressive form by defeating fifth seed Jessica Pergula in the Miami Open quarterfinals. This victory came after an upset win against world number one Iga Swiatek. Alexandrova, the 14th seed from Russia, will now face American Daniel Collins in the semi-finals. Collins, a 23rd seed, kept her title hopes alive in her farewell season by defeating French player Caroline Garcia, 6-3, 6-2, earlier in the day. With sports update, Bright Ebuchu, NTA News. That's Nationwide. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'm Ayo Deji. Mackindy, on behalf of the entire production crew, good evening.